Hey, it's Candia Raquel, founder of Centro de Poder. Welcome to the Sensual Sessions, the place to be to sense your fire and share your flame. And today we have a very special guest. This is Marie Marguerite Rangelovic, and she, she was sharing with me some of her views about movement and also about life and we're we're gonna talk about skin as origami but before i'd like to ask her like uh, if you could tell us a little bit more about your background mary marguerite and what what brought you to this view of the body and movement and heterotherapy yeah my favorite word um yes of course uh, and stop me if i speak too fast or too much uh, it began it be it, all, all the movement stuff i'm doing began uh, as a rebellious act. I did an art school, a big art school uh, from Paris, and um, it was very hard to get inside of that school. Uh, I managed to. I lost the love of my life because I chose to go to that school, so I had to make a big <laughs> choice whether it would be my career or uh, I would explore uh, something that was very precious to me. So as I have a background of a family that is behind me trying to um, put me on the good road of life, I had to choose uh, what my head told me instead of my heart, which I regret uh, every single day from them. That's 20 years ago. So I call it a rebellious act because... Um, One, one, my friend tells me that I'm part of the people, I please people, uh, and I don't please myself first. That's something I did till not long ago, I believe, September 2021. And I decided from then that I would like to stop doing that, uh, allowing myself to go in my 40s kind of being free. So uh, I did that art school, um, not wanting to do it. I had, I wanted to be, um, I wanted to do documentary photography and uh, I didn't want to study at all, but um, I had to, <laughs> I hate the have to now because uh, I had to do so many things. And then when I finished uh, the school, five, uh, it's seven years. After seven years of study, I um, tried to do what I studied and I didn't like it because uh, um, I didn't like to be forced to do things. So um, my body started to ache also because uh, before that from the age of four to the age of 16, I was a ballet dancer. And I didn't like it at all. I did it to please uh, family members. Uh, so I was good at it. And um, I did good schools and everything. But um, nothing of that was natural. It was always shaped by this idea, you have to. So when my body started to ache at the age of 25 and I couldn't walk anymore, I had to stop every few meters on the street. Like I didn't understand my back hurt. I couldn't move my leg. I had to wait that my leg would stick again to my body so that I could walk. And I said to myself, oh my God, if at, at 25 I have to start living like that, what am I going to look like at 35? or 45. So I said to myself, okay, I got to start um, exploring and um, I have to treasure what my school, art school gave me was this, um, they taught me to explore and um, 
question things a lot and they taught me how to look at things from different perspectives. So um, that's how I started exploring movement through yoga first. And I wounded myself even more. So I said to myself, okay, there is something wrong. So uh, that's how from a wound, um, I decided to start finding my own answers to the questions by um, going to what my heart uh, told me was interesting or what uh, made me, um, I don't know how you could call that, vibrate or what uh, made sense to me. So that's how I picked things. I picked uh, the fields. Uh, I did molten uh, fields exploration. So... I'm quite aware of many things because that's what my school taught me too, because it's a visual art school, but not only. Um, I had to explore many fields and be able to be able to do a project in many different fields, like photography, but a sculpture, like um, scenography, you know, multitasking. So multitasking was something I have learned. So that's how I started exploring not only yoga, I broadened everything. And that's how uh, I ended up uh, studying through a question. I ended up studying biotensegrity in 2019. And that's how uh, we, we started speaking about skin as origami because that's the topic we're discussing right now. And it's not from me. It's from Le Leonid Blyan, who uh, speaks of it very, very in, in an interesting way uh, and very passionate way. So if I can make a resume of the complexity of what I am, uh, probably I think I would end it here if you have other questions. <laughs> yeah, before we go into Skina Sorigami with this uh, topic of, of this interview, I want to ask you how can one reorganize oneself? And this goes because I, I'm going to tell a little story for for the sensualist that is watching us, listening to us, that this is the third time that we tried to make <laughs> this, this recording because there was a terrible thunderstorm here in Mexico and the internet like collapsed uh, yesterday and the day before yesterday. And I was like wanting to hide beneath a rock out of shame because I made Marie Marguerite waste her time repeatedly <laughs> and she told me like like it's okay now on top of of that she was trying to to <laughs> bring me together because I was so ashamed and shocked and she told me no worry I reorganize and she repeated like I reorganized and then I was like like okay thank you yes she reorganizes And like, okay, maybe I should reorganize myself and maybe I already reorganized myself, but not, not <laughs> completely in a rational way. So tell us a little bit more about that because that is key. And I think it, it has to do with, with this reframing of going from being a people pleaser first rather than pleasing oneself first and putting your oxygen mask and then saving the rest of the world? Like, how can we reorganize to set ourselves as a priority? And especially in matters of being truthful to our heart, to our pleasure, to what feels good, to, to what we want to do in life. That's a beautiful question. Thank you. Um, and a very useful question, of course. Uh, well, I have to thank Biotensegrity and the people from uh, the Biotensegrity family, because I call it a family and I call it a hierarchical family, because they have taught me a lot of things and they have taught me to accept being at ease with not knowing. 
I was like, you? I was like, oh my God, this is impressive. I'm, I'm going to talk and speak and study with people who are prestigious and who am I? Nobody. And I was like, you know, I'm ashamed. I, I don't know if I want this. I don't know if I'm going to be in, intelligent enough to say something like that's going to matter. And um, they have taught me to accept myself just the way I am because my process, if I'm honoring my process, I'm being important because my point of view is interesting because I'm honoring myself and I'm answering questions that matter honestly to me. And so that... Um, that gives uh, a lot of, um, maybe I should not use this word, but power to what I am because I'm being uh, aligned some kind. I don't know if that's the, quite the good word, but yeah. And reorganizing is a word I have learned with the Bites Integrity people family. Um, that's what we do uh, naturally if we're not... Um, cutting, um, not allowing our flow to be. We have um, learned through our schools, through our family processes to handle things, to um, behave in a kind of special way to respond to the society codes and uh, with doing that, we are not allowing ourselves to reorganize. We're putting ourselves in something we could call um, maybe a sort of an emotional uh, jail or a sort of a discontinuity of what we are because we are in doing so not listening to our heart. Uh, probably. And um, reorganizing is allowing ourselves to embrace the unknown with grace, probably, because this is the way I work. Um, I study, I read, I draw, I go to what matters to me, and then I just collect all that. And I have a sort of a big um, room of uh, knowledge and then I go into the world with that not um, allowing myself to be open to what comes to me and in that way I can reorganize because I um, I'm free to position myself or reposition myself in any moment and in doing so I'm putting I have the feeling that things are more alive yes yes I like the I way. don't know if it makes sense yeah yeah like like before taking more input and responding to that input say like the demands of, of other people like check in with yourself reorganize yourself first and then come forth and share but also allowing not knowing which is which is the arena where curiosity can happen because if if things are like already fixed like this is like like a pencil then like there's no room for curiosity whereas you can explore unknown things and and also take a creative part on the reality that you are experiencing and that you are sharing to the rest of the people. So you mentioned a word, your favorite word, heterohierarchy, and said that, that these biodensegrity people uh, were like a, like a family. So in my experience, my family, it's like very like, hierarchical and in some ways also authoritarian so it surprised me that view of of hetero hierarchy how how is that 
Uh, it's a very surprising word, isn't it? I learned it in 2019. I was pretty much old, let's say, <laughs> when I learned that word. For me, hierarchy, like a pyramid, pyramid yeah. was the word um, I knew. Like, okay, there's uh, the top and then <laughs> there's the base. Yeah. And then hierarchy is more linked to nature to a natural process, uh, meaning that it looks like uh, the ba bamboo tree. Um, I don't know the word in English. I think it's in French is rhizome, maybe rhizome. Uh -huh. rhizome. I can write it down in the chat. Um, that means that in one part of the um, uh, les racines, uh, the, the, the thing in the earth of the plant, mm -hmm. which I forgot how you call it, Root? Well, in one... Uh, yeah, the roots. Thank you very much. The root, in the root, in one part of the root, you have the entire um, plant. So if you take a piece of the little root and you plant it a little bit farther, you can grow the same plant. Uh, it is related to wholeness and to a sort of organizing thing more in... Um, Arborescence is the word in French. It means that there are no levels. Everybody is at the same level. And then you have many connections to all the elements. And it's a wholeness that it's all at the same level. They're not me. I'm higher than you. And I know more than you. That means that my knowledge is equivalent to this knowledge because it's rich because everything is connected. And again, it's all connected into this idea of wholeness, meaning that the whole matters. What happens here, that's to the butterfly effect. What happens here in this structure represented by one hand will resonate in the other structure. So that means that what this part or this hand thinks or does, well, uh, influences the, the other hand. Uh, it's putting things into this idea that no matter what, you always have to come back to this idea that we are a whole. And Tom Meyer says that we're grown out like an image. We're grown out of a seed, meaning that <laughs> this idea of the whole, everything is already there. So what is happening? It puts you on the track of a question like, how am I saying at things? Am I looking through the lens of wholeness or, or not? Or what am I doing? Nice, heterohierarchy. And that is 100% true. I mean, say, if, you, if we look at a football camp in the World <laughs> Cup, like we think that there are many little grass plants, like this is one little grass here and another grass. And actually the whole field is one organism because if the, the way of the reproduction and growth of, of, of the grass, of garden grass. So it changes the view like, okay, like that is one big grass. And if you take a little piece and you plant it in your garden, then you have, you're going to have like another one grass, but that in a way it's continuous with the other. And also not with all the species and all living forms, but there are full forests that are connected, like merging through the roots. So it's like one forest, no, not many trees though depends on, on the species and also with the mushrooms it's it's really interesting lynn margulis used to said say that independence is a political term not a biological term because we are really all connected like and maybe with with the pandemic and the internet we we can feel it like more like marie marguerite is now in France and I am in Mexico and we are like real time. We've, we have always been connected like through the atmosphere and whatever, but this, this um, understanding of, of reality 
in connection is is key for self esteem like like to say yeah i am part of this and and i influence and and what i do matters and resonates and the way that i talk to to someone may affect that person and the people around that person positively or negatively in the same way that that the people that is around me affect me and and then make a conscious choice on how are you gonna relate and and maybe take some time to reorganize yourself so what you're sharing to to system to the network is like delivered and creative yeah i'm loving this mary margarita so tell us about skin as origami what's that so interesting to just imagine what that could be ah isn't it it's a it's a very interesting topic and uh, it's even more interesting when you hear leonid vlayum Uh, he works, uh, he's part of this heterarchical biotensegrity family because a lot of people are uh, studying biotensegrity and of course they're not always um, de acuerdo. Uh, they don't get along. <laughs> uh, they don't get along or sometimes they don't see things because it's a sort of a working process still because, um, well, it's um, um, maybe I don't know if it's the right word to use, but it's emerging, like it's organizing to... Uh, come uh, into the world and into the broader perspective. Uh, but for the moment, it still is like a niche, like a small a group still uh, getting to be more known through our conversation. Maybe it's contributing to that. But then Leonid comes from the field. We all come from different field, fields, sorry. And that is the richness of the um, of the group or of the family. I don't know which words are less, um, because language is very important. We, we, we speak a lot about how do we use our language and the need of new words or words we don't know, like heterarchy. There are many others. I'm working on a book who is called the, that will be called The Garden of Words, which I would like to be a co-creation with all the people. And it's sort of a... Garden of words, meaning all um, the words uh, that we don't know, discovering all the words that we don't know in a sort of a not scary way. Um, so it will be creative. And um, so Lionid Bloom, Blyam, sorry, comes from the field of cerebral palsy. He works with children who have cerebral palsy, CP. And he works with Mariana Barreto, who comes from, if I'm not wrong, Venezuela, and she lives in uh, the US. I'm sorry, I don't know exactly where, but they work together. And um, it's a working process, like I said, and now has emerged this topic, uh, skin as origami, uh, implying a lot of things, implying this idea that um, till now we have left the skin away from our perspective of anatomy. We are studying the muscle, the bones, the structures, but we're taking the skin as an element of us, a way of the equation to look inside. But we forget to look at the first thing we have is the skin. The skin is our contact with what is around us. And what Leonid says is like, come on, why have we forgotten the skin? Where have our eyes been so that we have forgotten the first thing that we see? And so he says that we have an entire territory, the skin, that hasn't been explored yet. So imagine how that is stunning. When, you, when I heard that for the first time a month ago, I was like, no way, this is great. Like, I love exploring and, you know, you, you hear, let's explore the, the seas and the oceans and what's uh, down there in the oceans that we still don't know exactly. And it's so it's rich. And so you say, yeah, I would like to explore. It would be an adventure. And then Leonid offers you this simple thing you, you have on yourself <laughs> to explore. What does it even mean? Skin is origami and 
did I even think that I had a, have a skin? And when do I think that I have a skin? And what is that skin? Is it, is it, does it help me to move? Does it help me to be? And then a lot of questions emerge from that simple, um, um, how do you say, simple uh, choice of words that go together, skin as origami. Like, what is that? Wow. Yeah. Skin is our, also our first layer of defense from an immune system perspective. It's like um, main differentiator of what's your own and what is not. And it's where touch happens. Like the, the organ of skin is the touch organ of perception and if you look at it from an embryological level like like there's a very close connection of the skin to the nervous system and the medulla i mean we the nervous system communicates like the pressure the warmth and everything that that we perceive through the touch and with the image of skin as origami it um, invited me to imagine how we can fold like origami wise in every movement. And we have, we have wrinkles. So there's something beautiful about origami that you fold the paper and you make a crane figure and then you unfold the paper and you will see the lines and the marks of where that paper was fold and the direction that the paper moved in order to create a shape. So say, if I do this with, with my hand that is dif different than this, if I do this, then it's folded here. And if I do this, then I have another false or maybe I can remove this fold. So the folds of our skin are also like, like a map of our movement journeys, like the, the roads that, that we have um, went through. And it also made me think about my 40th year birthday recent wrinkles. Like I am glad that I have smiley, more smiley wrinkles than them anger wrinkles <laughs> and yeah it's very re revealing and it also pertains to this view of heterarchy like not not only being most muscle obsessed as in fitness or only fascia obsessed or bone obsessed but paying attention to our skin as origami. I like it so much. Marie, would you share with us an exercise or something so we can get a taste of what we have spoken so far? We have spoken of so many things, so I don't know, maybe you want to ask me um, something precise. Skin is origami. Yeah, the folds are very interesting. What I can and I would like to share with you is a video that I discovered in Bio Integrity of uh, embryology. It's uh, the beginning of life and it's all about folding. We are folded from the beginning. We begin in a circle, we're unfolded. And then we fold, we keep on folding. It's all about that. We just fold, fold, fold to allow the volume to emerge because we are a volume. And the other word is that we are anti-fragile because we are folded somehow to get into that volume we are. And which what is very impressive is that we did it alone by ourselves. So we made ourselves the way we are, which is a little bit like, wow, what is this idea? But yes, we did. It's a process uh, that we're ongoing that process. We're doing it every day. 
So we are um, creative in that sense and anti-fragile with this idea that we are not, how come, Lion, it asked that question, how come we're not crashing? How come what you said with the lines and the folds, how come we keep that volume? How come with all the forces that act upon us, how come that we don't crash or that we don't buckle like, um, I don't have to show it something, but how come we, we stay the way we are in that full volume that we are, <laughs> sorry, are. Yeah. So um, then for sharing an exercise, yeah, tell me. Yeah, I, I like a lot this um, wondering how, how, how we are not crushed by gravity and how we keep organized despite living on an entropic way. Well, at the end, gravity and entropy wins. Like we, we are here only for so long, but still it's, uh, it's wondrous to, to be in this so complex way to the point that is simple and elegant. Like you just feel with your skin, like you just listen and you are just alive. Like there's so much, going on just existing that is amazing and astounding yeah i like a lot that you share with us that video i'm gonna post it in in the blog that is accompanying this this podcast episode on centrodepoder.com so if you're listening this on spotify or apple podcast please go to Centro de Poder and you will find the video attached there and well of course if you're already watching this on our website just click and enjoy and to wrap up marie marguerite what are three words that would you would use to describe what you're sensing now you want me to describe what i'm sensing now that's what you're asking sorry with three words. With three words. Oh, you want Trinity. You know that the triangle is the most stable and the most uh, and the strongest element. Yeah. The it, triangle uh, preserves the space. So I felt like a space holder. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I am. That's what I define I am. And so, um, well, maybe that's not, how, yeah, I feel like I'm holding space. Um, and I like this idea on the last meeting we had, um, uh, we are studying a book uh, by Susan Solorzano uh, Lowell. Uh, it's called Everything Moves. It's related to biotensegrity. And um, what you, well, we talk about triangles and uh, we, we talk about this idea of preserving, I like this word, preserving the space. Yes. So inherently there are triangles everywhere. So there is a structure. So how do we organize uh, in a tri with the, those triangles? So again, questions and uh, Trinity is important. Um, In what we do, we say in biotensegrity, we say um, that you have one and uh, uh, when, you, when you create one, uh, from one you create two and then from those two forces, from one and two, they get into balance emerges three and three is the volume. So we have two forces tension and compression that get into a balance through a certain structure that allows us to emerge into a volume. The 3D, wonderful. Mm. And how can we know more about your work? How can the essentialist find you? Well, they can find me for the moment on Instagram because I'm teaching just one-on-one -on -one classes for the moment. And I will be... Uh, Probably in autumn, I will be uh, 
opening something more online through maybe some podcasts and I don't know, but for the moment it's on um, Instagram and it's my name. It's Marie Marguerite Rangelovic um, on Instagram. You can type my name and it uh, will pop up. And if you want to listen, I have another interview on a podcast, podcast my first one with John Avezan um, about how uh, my art school changed my teaching if I can call it a teaching. Uh, so yeah, you can go and check that out. I think it will be, um, it will allow you to ask yourself more questions. More questions. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're welcome. Thank you very much for inviting me and for reorganizing. <laughs> for, for reorganizing. Thank you so much. We have great concepts to implement and continue studying. So thank you so much also, Centralist, for being here. Remember to take the time to sense your fire so you can share this, the flame. And if you're not already, subscribe to the Central Emails to get this podcast weekly on your email. Head on to centraldepoder.com and get yourself signed up. Until then, see you and take care.